Good morning, everyone. Hope all y'all had a good time away when I was away. And Deacon Jim, I hear, did a great job the last two weeks. So uh, thank you for having me back. Uh, we're gonna kind of uh, we're gonna go have worship together this morning as we praise our heavenly Father. Uh, before we begin worship, is there any announcements from the congregation this morning? Yes, ma'am. And is that the fundraiser for the Good Samaritan Fund? So. Okay. That's great. And, and I just want to tell you all, that fund is used. Um, there's a lot of folks that have come in here, especially since the pandemic, that are just not making it. And so um, I've been trying to help as much as we can, but without depleting that fund too much. So we really appreciate all donations towards that. Yes, ma'am. That's a good one, right? <laughs> yes, in the back. Oh. Wow. That's great. Thank you guys for all your hard work. Uh, Stacy, you're here. Yes. Great. Anything else this morning? All right, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this time to uh, take apart from our week and God to focus on you, uh, to focus on your provision in our lives, uh, for your sovereignty in our lives, God, and for your church. And God, we lift up all of our brothers and sisters around the world, God, that are worshiping you today. God, for the persecuted church, God, who worships in a hiding and fear, God, but for your glory, we lift them up to you and we ask for their safety. Uh, for large churches, God, uh, around this country and for small churches around this country, God, we, we thank you and, and we ask that you help us be a united church for you. God, that we can spread your holy word to the lost, 
that we can make a difference in this world, God, that is hurting and in need of you. God, for those, um, those churches who reach out to the poor and the homeless, God, uh, to help with food insecurity during this time. God, help us as the body of Christ uh, look to our community and, and to decide, God, based on your calling, where can we best serve? So, God, that this fellowship of Sunday morning together, this time of worship, extends beyond Sunday uh, as it already is, God, that we continue to grow in that way. God, make us be your disciples. Be with us. Send your Holy Spirit upon us this hour. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And happy Father's Day to all the men in the congregation. Let's see. Uh, let us stand for our call to worship. It's been two weeks, so i got to see if I remember how to do this. Let's see. <laughs> in the midst of life's storms, God is there. Rise up, people of God, for you are loved and saved. Amen. Oh, this is... say, I can hear you guys so much better without all of those masks on this morning. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let us confess our sin and the presence of God this morning and one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit so that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, mercy on us. 
We confess that we have turned from You and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. And Your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown. Things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to You and uphold us by Your Spirit so that we may live and serve You in the newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us. And for His sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On our way, there is a every day.
Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. And by your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First reading for today is written in the 17th chapter of 1st Samuel, reading verses 1a, 4 to 11, 19 to 23, 32 to 31. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Sopho in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephrath's Gamut between Sopho and Azekah. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs, he wore bronze greaves, and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod, and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bears bear went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah, fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning, David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines, and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine, champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of the Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went out after it struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its tail, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was little more than a boy 
glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give you your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off, cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. Join me in reading David's ninth psalm this morning, verses 9 through 20. Read responsibly at the asterisk this morning. You, O Lord, will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge for the oppressed. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. The avenger of blood will remember them. Be gracious to me, O Lord. So that I may tell of all your praises and rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit that they have dug. And the Lord has revealed in acts of justice. And the nations go down to the grave. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. Rise up, O Lord, let not your mortals have the upper hand. Put them in fear, O Lord. And to David's words, all of God's people say. The scripture reading today is written in the sixth chapter of Second Corinthians, reading verses one to three. As God's co workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain says, in the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in suffering, in hardships, and distresses in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, in patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truth of speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, Genuine yet regarded as impossible. Known and yet regarded as unknown. Dying and yet delivered. Beaten and yet not killed. Powerful yet always resisting. 
people, yet making many rich, having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have so truly seen your goodness and open wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair chain, I sweep us to my chain, open wide your hearts also. Here ends the second Thanks be to God. Let's stand. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, reading chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. And the day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Good for Jesus. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated.
Almighty God, we lift up to you these offerings and these tithes, God, for your ministry, for your will to be done, for your community to be served through our hands and our feet. God, make us co-workers of the gospel. God, we lift all of this in your name. Amen. Y'all may be seated. (laughs) It's proper where I'm from, so. <laughs> um, so there's so many places we could go this morning uh, with these verses, and so I'm gonna. I have a script prepared, but we have some other stuff I want to talk about. So, um, why does the church exist? Who knows? To worship God. Okay, what else? Spread the gospel place to gather. I'm really surveying you guys just so you know. (laughs) What else? All right, so we got gathering, we got spreading the gospel, and I hinted on it during the offering prayer. Anybody get that? To be the hands and feet of Jesus, right? So in our community. So I, you know, I got to meet with uh, Pastor Craig this past week and Pastor Ray. And uh, we're talking about ministry philosophy, right? Like, what's what? What am I called to do? What empowers me and gets me excited, right? And I was talking to Jane about it this morning. Like, I love being with the people, like the stinky, lost people, right? Like in the gutters, like in the city, right? In the bar rooms, in the wherever they're at, the farmers in the field. If anybody has, you know, you have a horse, maybe I'll, I'll go out and pick up horse poop or something one day. You know, <laughs> Like, I love that type of ministry. Like, you're hands-on type. Like, I am not a good pastor in the sense of I, I don't like just sitting still and, and sitting in an office, you know, every day and, and just kind of doing paperwork. Like, that is the most boring. That is not what Jesus calls us to do. I like being the hands-on pastor. Like, that's what I love. That's what excites me. And so um, this morning, I am trying to get that sense from the church of what are those hands-on ministries that you guys want to lead? Because like, if it's all on the pastor or the staff or your council, I don't know if we're going to go anywhere. But if we can get the people to say, you know, God's called me to make an impact in the life of faith for Dundalk in this area. So obviously we have the pillowcase ministry, or and I don't know what else they make, but all the sewing, right? Like that's hands on, like they're doing something to make a difference. So I'm big on the Lord's Prayer where we say on earth as it is in heaven. So we are trying our best to bring God's earth to heaven. So in Lutheranism, right, this is where theology matters. Theology does impact the way we live church. There's always been this debate, the two kingdoms, God's kingdom and the kingdom on earth. And I'm a a Lutheran that says they're together, right? That we have to tie God's kingdom here on earth. And there are needs in this community. There are people that are hurting. There are people that are addicted to drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. We, we've talked about that, that we can make an impact for. There are people that are homeless, right? You just look around us. What are we actively doing to engage hands-on with those people, right? You know, some of them, and it's been weird since COVID, You know, the only thing they want is some human interaction. Human interaction. (laughs) I'll never forget going on the streets of New Orleans and hugging the homeless and feeling really like 
I don't know, at first, judgmental. I didn't want to touch them, right? But wouldn't have Jesus, wouldn't Jesus have embraced them with a hug and loved them? You know, we're, this is Father's Day. You know, some of us had good fathers, some of us didn't have good fathers in this congregation. But the point here is, is we have one father that's the example this morning. Our heavenly father, right? Uh, a father like the prodigal son where, you know, he goes off and takes, spends all his money and, and his father welcomes him back in open arms, right? That's the type of church that we need to be. That we, I hope we are. That when people come off this street not knowing Jesus, not knowing the right words to say, not knowing the words of the creeds that we say on Sunday morning, that we open them with welcome arms. So, so Pastor Blue, just so y'all know, I like to be hands-on. Hands-on, and i got to get back into that, right? Because it's going to cause me to dry up if I don't get on with my hands working with the people of God. So, join me. Think about it. I want you to think about where those mission opportunities be very missional. And maybe I'm talking completely crazy for some of you. And some of you are like, yes, amen. Well, I want us, I want us to really think about where those spots of this community which we find ourselves, God has called us in, that we can outreach. That we can outreach. Uh, we we go all the way back to October and we did that trunk or treat, right? We haven't really done an outreach like that since. But part of it is, is the season we're in. I want another one, like soon. I know we're talking about it. Man, wouldn't it be cool if once a month we had some type of outreach to Dundalk? Every month that this community knows that we love them for who they are. They're welcomed at this church. They're welcomed at this table, right? So somehow I'm going to get back to this message here. <laughs> um, but we look at then the 2 Corinthians passage. Again, not in my message this morning. So you look here, and it says, uh, verse 3, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. So I want you to think about first Evangelical Lutheran Church of Great Manor, that, the full name right here. And I want you to think about it. Are there stumbling blocks? If there are, cut them up, right? Cut up the stumbling blocks. Uh, give them to God. Be servants. And I think that the translation up here called it co-workers of the gospel, right? We're co-workers of the gospel of Jesus. And so we work alongside Jesus to spread the good news, to be the hands and feet that we were just talking about. And then he goes into the different things that we talk about. Uh, he's talking about having great endurance. Now, who has ever been just exhausted? Right? Everyone here. All right. And let me tell you, I know some of your church leaders, including pastor, have got to the point where we're just exhausted. Right? And the point here is, is it's time to have some endurance. we got to Keep running the race, even when we start getting shot at, right? Um, we, we're going to have troubles, it says, and hardships and distresses and beatings. Now, I haven't been physically beaten yet, so I'm in good shape. You know, emotionally you could be beaten, but we, we're, we are to expect the beatings, right? We are to expect it. It says uh, imprisonments and riots, and hard work, and sleepless nights, and hunger, and purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, and the Holy Spirit, and truthful speech, and the power of God. And so it goes on and on. It talks about, I mean, you could just take this scripture and say, this is what being a co-worker of Jesus is all about. Right? It's more than here. It's more than... Sunday morning, like we come to worship because we're a community of faith, right? Like we're not a community of faith because we come to worship. Like worship is the pivotal moment where we've been in ministry together. We've been serving the church. We've been serving our community. And then we come together on Sunday morning and we say, praise be to God, right? For all your glory. So there was something that happened, right? 
when us Luther, when the Protestant Reformation happened, let's go back in time, and we said, you know, we're going to leave the Catholic Church. And we left all the good works with it, right? Because good works can't save us. Amen, I got that. But sometimes we said, you know, they have good works and we're just not going to worry about it. And I ha- I'm at this point in my life where I'm saying, you know, we still should have some good works that we're doing. We, we as the church as a whole, there's, now this is America, American Christianity, has turned into like a Sunday morning experience. And I posted online this past week that, you know, it's not about how good worship was or any of that, right? Because it, only God, only God knows how good our worship are, is this morning. Only God, because he is who we are worshiping. So we're, we strive to do better as a church for God, right? Not for anyone else. So I want you to go through that passage of 2 Corinthians and put yourself there. Put your name there. I so-and-so, a co-worker of Jesus. I so-and-so, a servant of Christ. And go through all those words and say, man, what am I missing out on? So this morning... I don't think 11 o'clock is going to hear all this, so you guys got a special note. <laughs> Have courage in the storm. Have courage in your storm. Jesus tells us to have faith in the storm. And I got four points this morning, but don't worry, they're not that long. Okay? So we're going to have courage in the storm. So I want you to think about those storms in your life. Be a physical storm, an uh, emotional storm. So I just want to tell you just a, a very brief story because you guys don't, know, don't need to hear everything about me every Sunday, okay? So back at, when I was a youth pastor and we decided we would try living up with the northern people, right? We moved up to St. Louis. That was the first time. <laughs> first time we decided we're going to move north, right? So, and they told me it's going to snow. It's going to snow. So I said, okay. We actually lived in a little town called Warden, Illinois. We had no gas station. Okay, We had a population of like 450 people in our township. Uh, There was the little Methodist church, the parsonage that we lived in. Uh, Behind me, there was the town butcher shop. And I remember as a newlywed, Amanda calling me screaming one day because there was a severed deer leg on our porch. (laughs) Because <laughs> some dog, some stray dog took it from the butcher shop and brought it to the porch of the parsonage. <laughs> so uh, we were, you know, we were transitioning out of that call because I was starting to go to seminary. And I said, okay, I got to move back out of the north, back down south. I applied to every southern seminary in the country, right? So my father-in-law, because it's Father's Day, right? decided uh, him and my mother-in-law flew up to St. Louis and they were going to help us drive the U-Haul truck because from St. Louis to New Orleans, an experienced driver really at that point, I needed some help. So it was the evening before we were going to leave and we were all starving. The refrigerator is cleaned out. There's nothing in the house. He says, okay, we're going to go to Dairy Queen, which in rural Southern Illinois was a good 30 miles through country roads, right? So we went to Dairy Queen, and I don't even remember that little town, Edwardsville, Illinois. So we went to Dairy Queen, and it started the storm so bad that uh, when we got to Dairy Queen, the staff were throwing food at us, and they were going into the freezer. And I'm driving my Toyota Prius. That's what I had at the time. So... um, we started driving, and trees are falling everywhere, right? Come to find out there's a tornado. We're driving through a tornado. Blue lightning everywhere, right? We crash our Prius, our brand-new Prius, into a tree, right? And it, that still had a dent about this big into the, the front of the Prius the rest of the time we owned it because I never did get it fixed. But we thought, literally, like we were going to die, <laughs> And my father-in-law is sitting there in the passenger seat, and I'm driving, and he's trying to say, go this way, go that way, you know, and somehow we made it alive. Well, when we got home, uh, 
th there was no power, right? So then the four of us had to go into one room that we shared that evening, the last night of my ministry in Warden, Illinois. And I wondered to God then, God, what are you telling me? <laughs> Am I supposed to be here? <laughs> Am I not supposed to leave? But we made it through that storm. That, that storm that I thought literally could take our life away, God used in that incredible way. God used because that next morning, the sun came out. It was shining. It was beautiful. And we had a great drive back to New Orleans. That was an interesting time in my life. Right, Because at that point, probably in my first time in my kind of adult life, I wasn't working in the church for a while. I went home and took that janitor position at the local middle school and served. And then eventually got back in the youth ministry. But God uses the storms. So this Father's Day, I want you to think about Maybe the storms that your dad went through raising you. Or perhaps, as a father, the storms you have gone through raising your children. Right? It's, it's a, a, life is a roller coaster. It really is. You have your moments that are up and moments that are down and moments in between. And I've ridden a lot of roller coasters lately, so it makes a lot of sense. Right? So, we, like I said, we really loved Hershey. It's not quite Disney but it was enough to get our fix, right? We had a great time. But see, so let's go back to the Scripture this morning. In the first few verses, we hear the story uh, where Jesus is sleeping in the midst of a storm. Now, when there's a hurricane outside, for the most part, I can sleep. Like, I, I feel comfortable. Now, tornadoes, that's another thing. I try to find cover. Right, but uh, but think about Jesus sleeping. You're on this boat, and if you've ever been on a boat when it's rocking and moving, and it, you're scared to death, and you go and there is your captain of your boat sleeping. Now, who's ever been on like a big boat in the middle of, of bad weather? Anybody? Cool. So we got we got some of y'all that that understand this. Go to the Gulf of Mexico. Go maybe 100 miles uh, south of, you know, of Louisiana, the shores of Louisiana, near the oil rigs. It's all bad. Like, you better have a good boat when you're driving through there. But Jesus this morning, uh, in the Scripture, when he heard the worry of the disciples, he got up. He got up, and he went to action. So what I'm telling you this morning is, is when you pray to God, when you pray to our Heavenly Father, that He goes to action. It doesn't go on deaf ears when we pray to God. It's, it's an active relationship. So like, the God of the universe cares about us. He, he wants that relationship with His, his uh, children this morning. And when we cry, when we cry, Jesus hears our cries. Jesus hears our cries. He hears my cries. I want nothing more than this church to grow and thrive for Jesus. That's it. That's all I want. And, and I've had times that I've cried and Jesus hears them. He feels them. He hears my cries for those going to hell because they don't know Him. He hears my cries when I'm emotionally bruised and beaten. He hears my cries when I have a hard time finishing whatever it is for the week. He hears my cries when I'm drowning and I don't know where else to turn. See, congregation, Jesus hears our cries when we think we're about to drown, when we think in life we are struggling through something that we can't get through. Jesus is there. Jesus is there with the tissue box wherever it's at this morning. Jesus is there in the midst of life's most difficult challenges. And it's hard, right? When you're in the midst of, of 
stuff and and it's it's heavy and you feel all alone and isolated right or even if your family is there Jesus is there Jesus is is with you Jesus is with us in the storms of life because church family he was there with his disciples we may not always see him or hear him but he is weathering life with us when we lose that job and we we can't pay our bills when we when we got that promotion at work that we've been dreaming about right and the good and the bad Jesus is there and we cannot think for one moment that he does not care for us and again I, I've gone through those ups and those downs but God has always turned those crappy situations into good ones for me always always and I'm sure for many of you this morning you've had those experiences right where life just sucked right and God just turned it around completely and you're like where did this come from how did God know this is where what I needed at this moment in my life you know and I've heard some of those testimonies from within this church. And let me tell you, congregation, we have a lot of them. We have a lot of testimonies of, of God working in the lives of this church. And I believe as the pastor, if we were just to be more open and vulnerable with each other and, and open to this community, man, you all can be a beacon of hope for those people out these walls. A beacon of hope for those, you know, people my age that are just trying to figure life out. You guys can be examples for the lost sheep in this community. For those people that are the nuns and the duns, right? Those people that are just so mad at church. This church can be an example to them. A living, breathing testimony of the power of God right here we just have to decide to do it now again I know this is a cultural difference right like people up north here in the northeast are less open with sharing right and I'm always apologizing like at least out there my son going up and hugging every random stranger right because that's just I don't know people kind of give us weird looks around here for that but that's who we got to be. So I'm, I'm kind of telling you, embrace some of that, more of that Southern culture of being open. Give a hug. Give a lending hand when needed. Because Jesus this morning, that's exactly what He does. That Jesus has the power this morning, brothers and sisters, to calm those storms with a simple word. Right? Be still. Be still. He says, be still and know that I am God. Be still, brothers and sisters. So why are we so frightened? He, said, he asked the disciples, don't you have any faith? Now that's, that's hard. That, that's, that takes me aback, right? When I'm having doubt to say, Man, do I have any faith? I mean, the faith the size of a mustard seed can move mountains. A mustard seed. Do we have a faith the size of a mustard seed this morning, congregation? And if we do, do we believe what the Word says? That we can move mountains, right? That we can clear valleys all for the kingdom of God. To be living testimonies. But again, don't, don't feel um, ashamed when you wrestle with God. You know, Jacob in the book of Genesis wrestles with God, right? We have all these stories of, of the disciples and, and leaders in the church, right? Paul, right? I, I always go back to Paul because I always say, you know, if God can use a murderer for Jesus, May, I would hope he could use me, right? 
Like, if God can use some of these people that you would never expect, God can use me. So I want you to think out in the congregation. Many of you have been discipled your whole life. You've been a Christian since the time you could remember. You have so much knowledge of the Word of God. Of You have a relationship in your heart with Jesus. But those fruits, right, those tools are being underutilized for the kingdom. So I am so uh, glad when, when I see random classes pop up around the church, right? Or, and I believe because COVID is becoming, uh, I don't want to say it to an end, but we are definitely more normal than we were. I mean, we're always a little strange. It's okay as a church. Uh, but more and more are starting to come back. And I believe the church is on a healthy, projected path to reach people for Christ. So, God, so, brothers and sisters, hear this. God does hear our cries. He does hear our prayers. And He listens. And He is calling all of us this morning to once again get out that boat. Right? Get out the boat, even if it's storming outside. Right? To get out, walk on some water. Look at this passage from 2 Corinthians and say, you know what? I am a co-worker of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a co-worker. I am a servant. I'm going to go through all these things, and that's okay. Because God's going to get me through it. So, congregation, uh, I want you to pray. I want you to pray sincerely on where is God calling you to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Where is he calling you this morning? And I'd like you to to really think about that. And I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down. So I'm going to do something impromptu here. Next week, see this table here? I'm going to put this table here in the middle. And on Sunday morning, I'm going to have you come take those pieces of paper, and I'm going to have you place them in a basket. And we're going to kind of survey the church and say, where is God calling us to be the hands and feet? And then we're going to act on it. We're not just going to talk about it. I'm tired of talking about stuff. Let's just do stuff, right? So we're going to take those items. We're going to say, man, we got 10 people that are interested in this type of ministry. Let's do it. Let's just make it happen. And I believe we're starting to do that. You know, we, again, we got this food ministry that is going to be getting next door. So I know for a fact this church is, people have always asked, what's going on with the house next door? Right? Can I get an amen? Okay. Everyone wants to know what's going on. So we have something happening in the house next door. We have a food ministry that's going to be happening. Kevin Nazorski, if that's how you pronounce their last name, I'm always messing that up, is starting the ministry. You know, they're looking for donations of time, talent, finances, all of it, food. Help them out. Reach out to them. We are always looking for volunteers to do stuff in the church. You know, all this stuff on Sunday morning, I'm going to be honest, all this stuff upstairs, I know causes some people stress and anxiety. I know it. It's okay. I'm not telling you it shouldn't cause you stress and anxiety. But I'm telling you, we're, I'm trying my best to make it happen. But I can't do it on my own. Jen uh, and Colin up there. Cannot do it on their own. We need people that feel called by the Holy Spirit to do those things. So please be a part. Please be a part. If you see a Bible study going on and you're not involved in one, be a part. Jane, I think you still run uh, Prayer Warriors, right? Be a part of the prayer team. We need people praying every single week. There is so much going on in this life of this church. We need. I want 95% of our church involved in something. You could be involved. You can grow. That's how you build community, right? So um, I don't know if that's that's where I'm going to try to end it today. Thank you for hearing my uh, off-topic conversation today and my sermon. And Yeah, Millie. You got a testimony?
Amen. Absolutely. Let's pray. Absolutely. 100%. So please hear, let's, let's uh, out and pray for this, the word of God this morning that uh, it impacts us. God, we, we take this word from, from your holy gospel, God, from, from the epistle reading, God, that um, we are to be co-workers, God, for you. That we are to weather storms of life, good, bad, but we know and trust that you are with us. God, you have called us to be the hands and feet of you, God, for, for the loss and the hurt and, and God, the, the beaten, God, the persecuted. Help us as the church, God, fulfill your calling on our lives. Uh, to, to move forward in ministry, in the gospel, uh, God, in our outreach to, um, to this community in, in, at large. God, help us in our souls. God, to, to grow in our faith. God, if there's any of us this morning that uh, doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus, God, I, I ask your Holy Spirit to, to dwell, God, to to go in their hearts and their minds and, and to, to bring them home. God, to bring them to you. God, for our, our family members that uh, need Jesus in their life. God, let us be examples to them. God, let this church, uh, as Second Corinthians told us this morning, not be a stumbling block. God, I don't want to be a stumbling block for anyone. So, God, if there's any of those that are around this church, God, we ask you to just cut them up and throw them in the fire. God, so that we can be a direct, impacting congregation for you. So that, God, that our legacy, our legacy as a church, moving forward, God, that we continue to move forward. God, is that people... God, will not be lost sheep without a shepherd. Help us, God. Help us be still and know that you are God, God. And we pray all this in your holy name. Amen. Let us stand this morning, brothers and sisters. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day He rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. All right. So, uh, how can we pray for you this morning? I know we're running a little late. Sorry. So yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Back, Stacy. Hear our prayer. Yes, ma'am. Hear our prayer, Gail. Hear our prayer. First. Lord, in your mercy, in the back. Lord, in your mercy. Hear 
Yeah, right, bro. Yes, sir. Mm. I assume he was born on that very same day at 25 years ago, so I assume that's what he was told. But now all of a sudden, that all of a sudden, a gun shot, and they're saying he's one born Swedish who is hurt and has money, and they are now accusing the race of war. Mm. Praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Some of our states are coming to the butcher diaries. And you wonder, I, w I would hope that would be God is in the hearts of people. Lord, in your mercy. Chuck. Hear our prayer. Yes, ma'am. Hear our prayer. Amen. Let us rise together as we uh, say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please receive this blessing. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you all. As the Lord has given to you such a peace and healing, now go into the world offering God's love and hope to others. Go in peace and remember that God goes with you. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 